Where is this guy? I'm trying to record. Yo, Lucas. Are you... What the fuck? Dude, what? Dude, it's not funny. I'm trying to record pulls right now. Come on. We're on a schedule. Jesus Christ. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Cosmic Panel. Back again with another edition of the Weekly Comic Pull. Before we get into the video, just want to remind you guys that we are sponsored by Comic Universe. Located at 446 McDade Boulevard in Folsom, PA, these guys have a lovely selection of just about everything you need as a comic fan. We're talking new books every single Wednesday a subscription service that you can sign up for and save 10% off new books every week. We're talking hardcovers, trade paperbacks, plenty of keys all over the walls. They got graded books. They got a lovely selection of back issues. They got a great dollar bin section. Uh, more recently, they have Pokemon cards and lots more toys. So definitely go and give them a visit, guys. If you see Mike and Mike, let them know the Cosmic Panel sent you. Thanks so much for the sponsorship. Yeah, thank you guys. As always, remember to like, subscribe, support your little comic shop, and comment down below what books you're pulling this week. Anyway, before we kick off, let's, uh, or actually, let's kick off. Uh, Elias, what's your first poll? My first poll for this week is going to be Ultimate Black Panther number six. Um, this series has been, in my opinion, the weakest of the Ultimate line, um, but uh it, last issue is finally starting to pick up yeah um, my main issue with this book was just the pacing was very off um they were kind of taking a long time to do very little and it seemed like they were also trying to do the time jump the month by month time jump um so it created a bit of an awkward pacing um but we're finally getting some more uh action with Ra and Kanshu and the fists so i'm excited to uh to learn more about Moon Knight in this universe. I think the characters, both of them, have a lot of uh, potential. So I'm hoping that this issue has some uh, has some answers and has some action for us. Yeah, I also like uh, the dichotomy of the new uh, metal being that vibranium uh, basically uh, enhances metals and inorganic materials, while this enhances biological materials. I thought that was a pretty interesting di dynamic and economy to the story honestly yeah uh, an, an anti-vibranium uh, as they described it it's interesting i'm curious to see um if it has any roots in marvel lore or if it's just going to kind of be roots. its own creation uh and they're just going to kind of go with it and develop it the own their own way um, yeah, yeah i'm interested I, to see i wish they had given us more information about this like when they revealed it because like when they revealed it like three issues ago it was like okay here's a green orb cool i guess like like we didn't we didn't know anything about it so it's like yeah now now it's like okay this is actually interesting but this is information that we've honestly should have gotten like issues ago yeah that being the reveal at the end of an issue is kind of goofy because yeah. I don't think it's we didn't know what it was. Lore, so it's just oh, big fucking orb. <laughs> like you and I were like, is it like an alien thing? Like what? What is this? <laughs> yeah, pretty strange. But, but yeah. I hope it gets stronger. You know. Yeah, definitely be interesting. What is your first pick for this week? So my first pick is Atana Bring Down the House. The art for this is phenomenal. I'm not going to lie. The art is is spectacular. Javier Rodriguez is amazing at uh, capturing like the, the whimsical slash like supernatural angle of Zatanna. Um, the first issue was, was solid. I don't think it's the best start to the story, but it definitely got um, some pretty consistent characterization for Zatanna down. And also showed off that in this version, in this universe, she doesn't like to say that her magic is actually magic. She hates, she avoids the word magic uh, and always says tricks um, because when she was a child, she used magic and accidentally set a boy to hell. So she's like very traumatized from that. Um, and so it's, it's very interesting to, to worry again, explore her father's disappearance and kind of her introduction into magic in general after having basically forsaken it 
uh, after after casting that kid into hell. So pretty interesting series. It's a black label series, so not not any anything is going to be canon, but um, it's pretty fun. Not gonna lie. Cool. Yeah, I haven't gotten a chance to uh, pop this open yet, but I'm excited and uh, great creative team. So very promising. Yeah. No, exactly. What's next up for you, Elias? Next up for me is going to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. This is a uh, big deal um, for TMNT fans, uh, new and old alike. Uh, They are finally restarting the numbering on a very long run, after a very long run of TMNT. And I'm excited about this series because it is being written by Jason Aaron. Um, For me, Jason is one of my favorite... uh, Marvel writers, and I'm very curious to see what he has planned with the Turtles. Uh, This is definitely not who I saw working on the Turtles next. Um, Very curious to see what he has planned for them. Um, If we're going to kind of get a classic vibe or if he's going to try and introduce some new characters. Either way, very, very curious and I'm very excited. Um, It looks like Joelle Jones was on some Catwoman. Um, Not super familiar with her work. But yeah, I'm very excited uh, to see what this book holds. I think this is a really fun uh, team and a good jumping on point for for Turtle fans. Yeah, I was just looking at this, and apparently it's not a full reboot. It is keeping the canon of the other IDW Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle runs, but it is a, a hopping on point. So that's pretty cool, Jesus honestly. Christ. <laughs> what? There are so many variant covers. Oh. <laughs> what the actual hell? Oh my god, you're right. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, everyone has a retailer exclusive. Oh, damn. Yeah, that's yeah, I... that's yeah, that'll that'll do it. All right, Lucas, what's next up for you? <laughs> next up for me, Supermassive number one. Uh this is technically the second supermassive. Uh but yeah, this is basically uh following up uh what the fuck's been happening to the rest of the world during the Radiant Black event. Um because the other series have been continuing, but they haven't really been addressing it. Um, and everyone's just kind of been like, well, uh, no one wants to live in Chicago um, because that's where the alien uh, thing is happening. Um, so this is going to be a nice little segue from that, basically showing what the other characters in the universe are doing uh, while the aliens invade and kind of give us an explanation about why they're not helping Radiant Black. Um, but yeah, we got Shift, we got Radiant Red, we got Rogue Sun, Dead Lucky, and Inferno Girl Red. Um, the only one that's really missing here is no one, but that makes sense because he has no superpowers. So <laughs> he is just a man in a in a in a Batman esque suit. So <laughs> I'm actually kind of happy he's not fighting off against aliens. That would be absolutely bonkers. But yeah, pretty pretty fun, pretty interesting. Man, I should have never smoked that shit. Now I'm in super massive Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, bro. And and following up on Radiant Black too, um, we finally got the two timelines converging. Where one timeline got to see the other and was like, "Please don't do this shit." <laughs> mm. It was like a it was like a Batman v Superman like Flash like moment mm-hmm. where he's like, "Tell Lois." <laughs> so it was it was pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, Supermassive is is still going, so strong. Kyle Higgins is still. Kyle Higgins and Ryan Parrott are are on top of their shit building this universe, and it it's honestly insane that it keeps building every year. So, yeah, yeah, very very cool. But yeah, what's next up for you, Elias? Next up for me is going to be Nick's number one or NYX number one. Uh, this is a the surprising. New York Knicks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, this is a surprising addition to the. Uh, new batch of X titles. Um, but this is going to be a fun, I think sandbox for some more obscure mutants. Um, prodigy. Yeah, we got prodigy, which is very cool. Um, I always enjoy him. Yeah. Uh, Anal, which is a very surprising addition. And, uh, otherwise we got some of our, some of my favorite, uh, female mutants of recent times. Uh, we got Miss Marvel, we got Laura and we got, uh, Sophie from the cuckoos. So, this is going to be pretty interesting. Uh, like this is cuckoos? written by Hive Mind, and uh, they are going to hopefully be having some cool plans for these characters. Um, their stuff has been kind of hit or miss lately, but uh, I'm hoping that they're ready to tackle this uh, with full force. Yeah, I, I actually really like the ending for their Thunderbolts run. It's just an absolute shame that it was a mini instead of a fucking series. Um, yeah. But 
yeah, no, I'm hoping that please don't let this be a fucking mini again. I'm hoping this is actually going to be an ongoing or something because I, I think they work best when they have an ongoing um, or at least tell them from the get go it's going to be a mini. Um, but yeah, no, this looks like a pretty eclectic variety of, of mutants. I'm very excited to see what's going to happen. And also we still have the fact that <laughs> Laura saw a version of herself die and is technically not the root. It's weird. Oh man. It's fucking clones. Um, but yeah, it, it, well, Talon it, is, is dead now. Yeah. Talon is dead now. Yeah. So, so yeah, either way, it's still, it's still weird. And, uh, yeah, I wonder what's going to happen. Also, what happened with the rest of the Cuckoo Sisters? They just died, right? During Hellfire Gala? That was, like, the whole thing? Um, I mean, yeah. Uh, but I don't know how Sophie is here. Yeah, she was I the one that really Phoebe liked... Phoebe was the one in, in X-Force. Yes. And uh, so Sophie was the one that fell in love with Cable. That's the thing. Yeah, that's um, why this it, is a weird, weird pick. Well, so so an interesting thing from the Kokoan era was in the Cable miniseries where it was like young Cable. Um, yeah. We got to see his future and he was married to Sophie. Hmm. Um, so Sophie is like, will eventually travel in time with Cable and marry him. Yeah. So that was like basically confirmed. So I wonder if this is like Cable kind of interfering or something like that just to save her or something along those lines. Because that would be interesting. But yeah, Phoebe, Phoebe was kid omega's girlfriend x and i'm pretty sure she's dead no 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 she she was in the end of uh wolverine oh, was or she? x-force or whatever yeah, yeah oh, she's, she's fine but again that's why i'm surprised with this sophie inclusion and also did you read x-men number one yeah 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 I, they didn't explain how quentin was back yeah they didn't um, i was very surprised was by that <laughs> i was like i was like okay we're just gonna breeze right through this <laughs> yeah so yeah, this is just a strange, and this is the duplicate of Laura. So yeah, this is yeah. just a really strange lineup, and um, just I don't see this being like a super long lasting thing. I think that's why they're trying to head this with Miss Marvel. They're thinking maybe some of those fans will come over there, and I hope they do. Yeah. But um, they're just kind of using this post Krakoan era of uh, to just roll out a shit ton of X titles and try and take advantage of that that fan base while they're still throw it out the wall there. And, sticks. Um, and hopefully, hopefully people pick it up, but yeah, I don't know. This is a pretty, pretty obscure uh, pick here. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting either way. All right, Lucas, what's next up for you? Next up for me is six fingers. Number five. This is the last issue of the six fingers. Um, so we came to the realization in the hand, the one hand and the six fingers that, Everyone's a fucking robot. <laughs> this is basically we, we got fucking Westworlded. Uh every everything's a fucking robot. No one's actually a person. Uh this is just uh basically some some form of like robot factory where the robots are are thinking that they're human and therefore they're put to work. Um but so that they never uprise or anything like that. They think that they're humans and they have like little cycles. Uh, and we realize that because the detective goes all the way to the fucking airport and realizes that all the planes never take off. And it was like, oh, yeah, why would none of the, none of the planes take off? Hmm. Um, but yeah, so we realize that the serial killer isn't actually killing people. He's killing robots. But the reason why is because he's quite literally the glitch in the system trying to like tell the other robots like, hey, wake up. Um, so way more uh, crazy than I thought it would be, to be honest. Um, story story took a wacky fucking turn. So I don't know what's going to happen now because last we saw, the detective was locked up by the scientists that make the robots and they're questioning him being like, hey, how the fuck did you figure out that you're a fucking robot and everyone else is a robot? Um, please explain. And so now we're going to get the perspective from the Six Fingers about what's happening with uh johannes so very interesting very excited to see what's gonna happen huh. yeah definitely not the twist i was expecting that's pretty crazy very much not they kept on hinting that there were robots but they didn't necessarily say it outright they kept on saying bioorganics um but they never like said like hey we have a robot here like they never used that term so it, it was very much like a blinking you miss it type of reveal but like now now that i'm like 
I know it. Like I can look back and be like, oh, that makes sense. Huh. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, it was it was a very interesting review to say the least. So six fingers and one hand is one hand also ending? Yeah, one handed actually in, ended last last issue. So they already had oh, okay. issue number five. And so this is the one that's gonna close out the entire series. Oh word. Cool. Yeah. The one hand started it and then the six fingers closes it. Nice. So pretty interesting. Sweet. But what's next up for you, Elias? Next up for me is going to be Sacrificers number 10. Uh, Pigeon is on a rampage. Demon time. Uh, <laughs> just fucking shit up. Uh, last issue was amazing. Uh, parts art, action, and drama. Um, Pigeon is uh, kind of discovering this newfound power, still getting used to how powerful he is. Um, and definitely had some, you know, regrets about, um, how he used his power. Um, cause right now he's just, again, on a rampage using it for violence, but, um, I think rightfully so taking, you know, vengeance on the, the people in power who basically, uh, created this tradition of sacrificing, uh, someone every year from your, uh, your, from your village, from your household. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty intense. Um, we haven't had time, uh, with Saluna for a while. So I'm excited about this issue to kind of see what she's up to. Um, see if she's going to be able to survive, maybe meet up with pigeon. Uh, I'm, I'm sure she's doing see just what fine. Has to do, uh, has to, has to say to her at this point. Um, but yeah, she's definitely in rough shape. So it's just going to be a tough fight for her. If she is able to survive. Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to say the least. And Pigeon, yeah, I really like Pigeon's almost brutality against the gods. But then also, um, they kind of hinted that the gods don't actually know that it was children that was being sacrificed to them. Um, which is interesting that they right. didn't know that. So my guess is that, uh, what's his name, Soul had like the recipe, quote unquote, locked down or something. So that the other gods wouldn't just like consume whatever the fuck the nectar to get yeah, it's themselves. Very possible. He kept it a secret from the rest of them. Yeah. So very interesting. Nonetheless, this world is wild as fuck. And uh, yeah, Rick Remender killing it. Yeah. And beautiful art from uh, Max Humara. Oh yeah, definitely. All right, Lucas, what is your next pick? My next pick is the nice house by the sea. Um, James Tingian is dropping the sequels that everyone's been fucking asking him. I guess someone finally grabbed him and held a gun to his head. Um, whether it be Department of Truth or The Nice House by the Sea uh, or The Nice House by the Lake, this is now The Nice House by the Sea. Um, so, from what we understand, <laughs> uh, Max was was some form of an alien that basically collected people of like different fields, masters of different fields, of culture so that we can he, he could preserve it once humanity and the earth was killed by his alien overlords or whatever the fuck um really interesting honestly crazy story crazy haunting tale very much like a horror story more than anything else um as he saw these people psychologically just break of being in the same house with each other and like realizing that one, they can't die. Like they can't even kill themselves if they wanted to. Um, they can summon literally anything to the house except for anything related to like uh, people or anything like that. And then like them uncovering the secrets of everything. But yeah, it seems like end of, end of the last series, Max sacrificed himself uh, and then dis uh, pretended to die, pretended to die. So that everyone would think that they are now under control of their own fate, even though he is still kind of overlording all of them. So still very interesting, very, very uh, unique book. And uh, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Sweet. Yeah, this is uh, definitely a book I've heard a lot of good things about and uh, definitely uh, a long awaited sequel. So pretty exciting. Oh, also the art is bonkers genuinely insane um if you have not seen the art for it it gets absolutely crazy um yeah as the story really. progresses yeah no the art is wild to say the least um or sorry not max it's his name isn't max my my bad i'm realizing i'm looking back at at the my 
the previous series. You just Walter. gotta get a clean take of the name and then just edit it over each time you just said Max. <laughs> Walter. Walter is the guy's name. So I guess this is a new monster, new alien. I guess same same deal, but yeah. Either way, interesting that it's happening multiple times too. Um, but it should be interesting. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. What's next up for you, Elias? My final pick of this week is going to be Vengeance of Moon Knight number seven. And uh, like Lucas said before, um, when they have a sub artist on Moon Knight, they're usually pretty strong. And I thought they were on the last issue. Um, So this is going to be a huge one. Um, This was, you know, something that Lucas and I had theorized about a long time ago. Um, definitely wasn't expecting them to do it in an event. Um, so it's pretty exciting. Um, but spoiler warnings, if you guys haven't read, uh, blood hunt four or saw that they did a zero issue for moon Knight. <laughs> um, but this is, this is huge. Um, they are breaking Conchu out of his Asgardian prison to turn the tide against blade and the vampires on earth. Um, so super, super excited about this issue. Just from the cover, you can tell that um, Hunter's Moon and Tiger have to break into Asgard. Um, and hopefully this whole issue will just deal with that. Uh, Blood Hunt, you know, my main issue with Blood Hunt is just the pacing. And so they did it very quickly. Um, but hopefully this will kind of give us more of a, a feeling of how difficult this actually was. You know, how they get Wrecker, um, you know, how they, you know, break Khonshu out so quickly, like stuff like that. So, yeah, i yeah. um, super, super excited for this issue. Alessandro is back. Uh, man, I just cannot wait to to buy this issue and pick this up and uh, and flip through it. Yeah, I' not gonna lie. I didn't realize it was a backup artist until literally you just pointed it out. So uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that that goes to show. <laughs> when when they care enough, they can pick out a great artist, and uh, and that goes a long way. Yeah, no, hundred percent. But yeah, no, it seems like every character in the Midnight Mission. This was honestly, e- even if you were saying that, like. Oh, he came back too fast. Like Mark came back too fast. I honestly feel like this was still a really great use of his death because it gave us time to see what the characters are like without Mark there, kind of holding their hands. Um, oh yeah, no, very much like the the time passing in the book. I think was was excellent. I have no problem with that pacing at all. Yeah. Um. So I I, I really liked it. Man, this this yeah. run has been consistent. I just mean the pacing in Blood Hunt of just like. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm record. I'm here now. <laughs> I'm gonna break Kanshu out, and now Mark's back. So it's just very fast. So yeah, I'm just really, really excited for this issue. I think it's gonna look beautiful. Uh, you know, we've never seen uh, Alessandro draw anything as Guardian really before. Um, so super, super excited about that. And uh, yeah, man, I just uh, super, super consistent series. And they did announce that they are starting a you know new Moon Knight series. Um, I think it's just gonna. It's, I think it's gonna be called Mark Specter Moon Knight. So you know he's back, I guess. Oh really? Um, yeah, and that's gonna be the next volume. So when this Vengeance run is over, then they will uh, start up again with Mark. So pretty I exciting. It was something else. And I'm curious to see where um, where um, Cloak is gonna stand um, now that Mark is back. Huh. Yeah, no, it'd definitely be interesting to say the least. Um, yeah, super hype. Yeah. No. All right, Lucas, what is your top pick for this week? My top pick for this week is No One Number 10. Um, this is the last issue, and holy fuck, last issue was crazy. Everything came to a fucking head. Um, talk about buildup. Like, like this series, slow burn, definitely. I liked it. I, I get that it's not for everyone. But last issue was really the culmination of all that shit hitting the fan. Um, we had the the law passed that basically allowed if you were threatened online or threatened in person, you're allowed to basically take your gun and shoot someone, um, which is an insane fucking law until you look at modern politics and go, Oh yeah, no, they would probably pass that. Um, But yeah, basically this story is just commentary on that. And last issue, we got to see the entire city of Pittsburgh just basically go fucking feral over just like online threats and people taking shots at each other. We, we saw a security guard shoot someone because they said, fuck you. Uh, and, and I was like, don't let me see you again. 
Uh, and then he went into the elevator and got shot by the security guard because the security guard, quote unquote, felt threatened. Um, and then a kid brought a gun to school and used it because she was being bullied. And technically, she's protected under the the law. So it's like very interesting. And we got a moment where no one took off their mask because they were fighting. No one was like trying to disarm everyone, but everyone was trying to fight each other. And it's just like a full riot. And no one knocks out everyone and then just takes off their mask and looks into the city and this uh, double page spread and everything's just on fire and uh, without without dialogue it was like man i fucking caused this like like that you could easily tell that's what like was going through no one's mind so very very interesting i'm very excited to see how this is going to wrap up i honestly hope they don't reveal who no one is um because i like the idea of like it doesn't matter who they were it matters their mission, their statement more than anything else. But yeah, I'm hoping this gets a sequel at some point. But yeah, this is sick. Yeah, that's pretty huge that they never revealed his identity the whole time. Yeah, no, they haven't at all. We kept yeah. on getting people theorizing it. Like there was there was at one point uh, the podcast because there's a companion podcast, which is also fucking bonkers. That they have a companion podcast, but it works so well. It works so well as like a in between issues type of storytelling. Um, but they had a podcast episode where they theorized who was, and the thing is, I genuinely don't know how you would read the series without hearing the podcast. Cause it just, it like, it covers stuff that is like so integral to the story. Um, and they're like 20 minute episodes, so it's not hard, but uh, there was yeah. like an, op- there was an episode though, where basically they were theorizing who is no one because the podcast is called who is no one. And the, the boss of the podcast was like, I need you to theorize who is no one because we named the podcast that. And so they give out three names and two of those people get fucking shot dead the next day uh, in the next issue. So it goes to show. <laughs> and then the third person that survived didn't turn out to be no one because he got fucking rescued by no one in the no one mobile. Uh, not actually what it's called, but still. Um, but yeah, it just goes to show there's no fucking point to trying to guess who no one is. Um, right. But yeah, no, I, I, the series has been awesome. Very, very political. If you don't like political and slow burns and murder mysteries, maybe not for you, but I, I'm all down for that. All right, guys, this has been our weekly polls for July 24th. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff we said at the beginning. Comment below what you guys are excited to pull this week. And uh, don't forget to read some comics and support your local comic shop. Catch you guys next time. See ya.